live demo. Okay. And Maya. So, um, so we have a developer reference plugin we've, we've made for Maya. Mm -hmm. But Body Maya. Motion is agnostic. It can be integrated into any product, mm. any creation software, mm. whatever, whatever's needed. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll show you a quick live demo here. So we're going to get the character to jump over this uh, small obstacle over here. Mm. This little bench. So I'm going to reposition the character. Mm. Uh, what I want him to face that direction. Mm. I'm going to make a new prompt, mm. cut the prompt, make a new one. Mm. Call it, uh, let's get the, uh, an explorer jumps forward very far. Mm -hmm. So that'll be our prompt. OK. All right, so we're also going to generate with four variations. And that'll allow us to choose the one we like best. So I'll go and generate. Oh. And it bundles up the data and sends it off to the body motion service, which we're hosting right now uh, on NVIDIA. And it sends it back. And then we have <laughs> four variations to choose from. So we've got four different characters. Mm. So they all jump a little different, mm. but none of them really jump over the box that we wanted them to mm. jump over. OK, so um, maybe there's one in here that looks pretty good. Do you think, which pose do you like the best? <laughs> This one? Mm. Okay. okay. All right, so let's take that one. We'll commit that mm. to the rig, mm. which is just a default Maya human IK rig. Mm. And now we're going to um, adjust the performance, direct the performance further using pose targets. So, pose mm. targets, in this case, I'm going to set a full body pose target mm. uh, to make sure it hits this jump pose. Mm -hmm. And I could change this pose more if I'd like. Oh, of course. Um, and next, I'm going to set the landing position for the character, which I'll put over here. And for that one, I'll set a root pose target, which basically tells the character to be at that spot on the ground at that time. But it'll, it'll create the pose to get there. So now that we have um, the basics of what we want, we can go and generate again. And now when we generate, it's taking into account these different pose targets that we've set and the changes to the pose on the character. So we okay. get back four new versions mm. or variations that we can mm. choose from. So I'll s s take those out. So now the character starts from the position. Mm. They start to jump a little differently, mm. but then they all converge mm. onto the pose that we set. Mm -hmm. So it's all the same now. Yeah, yeah. And on the landing, mm. the landing is all a little different, mm. but the character hits the spot we need them to. Oh. So I'll walk you through some other workflows that we have here too. So this picks up from where we just left off, oh. and this is in Zora. Mm -hmm. And in this case, we're going to get the character to walk from this side over to the other side. So we're going to put in a new prompt. Mm -hmm. We're going to put in a full body pose target to mm -hmm. lock in or mask off mm -hmm. the existing animation that we just generated. Mm -hmm. and then we're going to put a, another root pose target at mm -hmm. the end mm -hmm. and move the character where we want them to be. And we'll do that in a second. And then when we go and generate, mm -hmm. we'll see the result. But in this case, the character walks through the geometry, so we just want to adjust that. Uh -huh. Move the character over a little bit, mm. and then set another root pose target, which mm. is like a waypoint, mm -mm -mm. Yeah. and then regenerate. So now the character properly passed through the environment. Oh. So we can do more. So sometimes in development, you get a note that says, mm. we need to change this. So uh, maybe they want the character to sneak now. Mm -hmm. So we'll lock off. Mm. I could pause it if you like. Oh, yeah. OK. Sorry. okay. Um, so we'll set a root pose target oh. segment, which will keep the character on the same path. And then we're going to change the prompt to have the character sneak. Mm. So when we ge regenerate now, the character uses the same exact path it used before, mm. but now it sneaks on the same oh. path. So we've entirely changed the motion style oh. of the character. We can do more, too. So we're going to mm. lock that off with another full body pose target, because we don't want that to change. And we have a motion capture clip, mm. which here is over a character reacting to something. But mm. they don't have a transition. It just pops into it. So we're going to lock off the motion capture clip from changed, uh, changing when we generate. Mm. We're going to change the prompt to have uh, the character or tell the character what to do in this space here. Mm -hmm. And now when we go and generate, <laughs> the character has a believable, you know, smooth oh. motion ca or transition into transition. the motion yeah, capture. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So here's the whole thing from start to finish. It took maybe five minutes to create. Um, so the technology, like I was saying before, it'll work anywhere. And we also have a native Unreal Engine 
plug it. Oh. I'll show you that in a second. So mm -hmm. that's integrated directly into the, or we've integrated it directly into the sequencer. Mm -hmm. But you know, people can look at the developer of its plugins and build it. They can look at them, they can build their own, do whatever they want. And oh. At least for Unreal, it integrates with retargeting and a control rig. Mm -hmm. So this will release uh, later this year under NVIDIA AIE license or NVIDIA Enterprise license. Enterprise at all. Okay. And we're really excited oh. to accelerate uh, the innovation workflow quite a bit.